Hi, I am Bogdan from DNN Sharp. Today I want to show you a bit of DNN API endpoint that we released, uh, just released a few days ago, and how we can use it to drive autocomplete data into a text box from action form. So as we type, and in this example today, we will type page names and get suggestions from the database. This solution will um, is a new feature that we've added in Action Form to be able to invoke an external URL to get autocomplete data. So it will work with any external service that uh, knows to read, to communicate with Action Form. So use the same naming, the same name for parameters, stuff like that. But um, in this today, I will show you how uh, easy it integrates with DNA API endpoint. So I hope this will be the solution of your choice. So let's get started. What I have here is a uh, blank DNN API endpoint module. I don't have anything added here. So I will start by adding a new method. So method is basically a, an action that you do against an object. So for example, in this case, I want to get pages. That's what I want to do, get pages. So this, uh, this is basically all there is about REST API. You use an HTTP method, in this case get, to do something against an object, which is pages. Now that I have this, I will proceed to add some input data because what I need, uh, I need action form to pass me the search query because the user types something and I'm supposed to return suggestions based on that. So I will name this query because I know that this is our action form will send it to us. So we have to name this query. For now, it's not configurable. Use query. Next thing, I will not mess with uh, validation or anything. I'll just leave it as it is. Next thing, I want to introduce to you a new concept that we've added in our modules, and that is entities. So, so far we have this context. We call it context where you load data. For example, in action form is the context where the form fields live, but you can also put values there. You, you can use the inject data action to put data there. You can use the SQL action to put data there. So it's like a repository, like a collection where you can keep adding data, but also get it out of there using the token syntax. And we'll get to that in a bit. Right now, what I want to mention is that we've added this entities concept to the context. So now, you can load more than data, you can also load entities. And we've talked a lot about entities with our customers on our forums. It's been a few months of discussions. And the solution that we came with right now, I think it's very elegant and very simple and I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, satisfied with the outcome. So uh, enough talking, let's see how we can use it. So right now, the problem before entities was that I could not have a list of something and export a list of something. So I want, in this example, I want to have a list of pages and output it at JSON. I couldn't do that before entities. So now I can use this action, load entities from SQL. It's the same thing, just use a SQL query to load some data and I'll load data from the tabs table of DNN. Then I will name my entity. I know it's intuitive to call it page because that's what it is. And then finally, I get to map SQL columns to property, entity properties. So on one hand, you have the database, on the other hand, you have the entities. You are not forced to have one on one. And most of the time, I think it's not worth having one on one. For example, in my case, I only need uh, to create an array of objects that have a text and a value field. Why text and value? Well, two reasons, because that's the standard in ASP.NET. So you have, if you work with ASP.NET, you have the list items that have a text and a value. So it's standard. And action form expects that. So that's how we communicate now with action form. Action form sends us a parameter in the query. In the query parameter, it, it sends us the search terms in the query parameter. And we are supposed to return an array, a JSON array, of objects that have two properties, text and values. Of course, we can put 10 properties in there, but action form will only read these two. So maybe I will extract tab ID and put it in the 
value and then maybe I will extract the um, tab name and use it as the text so one more thing before I uh, complete with this action I need to make use of the query of the search query because right now I'm just selecting everything but I don't want that I want based on the search terms only bring relevant suggestions so I will uh, write something simple you, you most of the time maybe you'll want to do something more complex but I will just say where tab name like and here I will use a token to get the value of the input terms so what I did here this query is how you get data out of the context is what I was telling you earlier you have this context you load data into it and some data goes in automatically like the input input data fields and then you get it out using the token syntax the token syntax is the name between square brackets that's it very simple and also uh, here in the context of SQL query you also don't have to worry about um, SQL injection um, our modules will take care of uh, sanitizing this input these uh, variables okay so what we have so far we have the load entities action we loaded a list of entities in the context that have two properties but we, we haven't used them for anything so nothing happens so far what we are going to do we are going to use the output json entity list action just type the entity name and what this action will do it will uh, go to, in the context grab all entities of this type and generate a json with them very simple and very powerful like i was uh, telling you so i'm very satisfied with this implementation and further you can apply criteria so maybe you don't want to export all entities but at the same time you want to have them in the context for other purposes in this case you just use criteria so for example let's say that you have pages that are deleted that you want to send an email later about them maybe do something um, save them on disk or push them to a web service or something but then you have the rest of the pages that you want to do something else with them and then you can use this criteria to filter down the entities that you want to operate with and that's it that's basically all i need to do just save and grab this url where is where is it oh okay i can go to the test screen first to test this method because it's easier to test it here and in this test method you'll see that i have a query where i can put something i'll put host and then you have uh, the two urls that the api is accessible with and this is uh, the second one is powered by url adapter so if you have url adapter it will work and then you have some sample jquery code you're not forced to call this api from the from jquery of course you can call it from any programming language server side client side mobile anything you want but you have this jquery code here that you can just click uh, execute and you can see the output and you can test it here test it with the various parameters you're not satisfied click the edit button uh, do it again stuff like that but in this case i'm only interested to see that it worked and now i'll grab this url and I'll go to the home page where I placed an action for module that's waiting for me to configure it. And I will just add a text box. And here you see the new feature that I was telling you about, the autocomplete URL. So I'll just put this URL and that's all I have to do. Because action form will invoke this URL. It will, uh, it will put the search terms in the query string under the query parameter. And in turn, it will parse the array, the JSON array of objects that have text and value, like I explained to you earlier. So let's just save that, go back. And now if we did everything correctly, we should just type, and you see I have all the results that contain an H, host, you see? So it's, it's, it was very easy to set up and very powerful because using autocomplete, you have the advantage of avoiding uh, inconsistent input but you also have the flexibility to allow for users to add their own input 
because if you have a drop down you only allow that options of course you can use a drop down with the other option but this is this this feels more uh, natural and more uh, elegant so i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you'll get to try dna api endpoint and i hope you get to try action form and if you have any questions please reach to us on our forums at dnnsharp.com/support thanks for your time